Oh. Look at him, fellas. <laughs> you crying, boy? We will go back down to McDonald's and get you a hamburger and some french fries. You little sissy boy! What's up, guys? Boy, Benny. Sometimes it falls to me to deliver bad and sad news to you. And so now it gives me no great joy to tell you that the only black late night comedy host is quitting the business forever, retiring into the abyss. Jimmy Kimmel is hanging it all up. But Jimmy Kimmel's white, you would say. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, don't ever tell Jimmy Kimmel that. Have you seen this? Sometime at night, call below, look up in sky and say, what the hell going on up there? The UFO live on other planet, phoning home like E.T.? Come along, read on TV about white people getting deducted by aliens, sticking all kind of hell up their butt. And that's a damn thing. Now, Carl Malone never seen no flying saucer himself, but if he do, that's going to be a spooky time. That's why Carl Malone say government got to step up and give 102% to keeping them little green man off this here earth. Because the day them dudes stick something up Carl Malone butt, that's going to, well, that ain't going to be no good time for nobody, especially Carl Malone butt. Listen up, E.T., you better stay the hell back. Nanu, nanu. Until next time. This year, call alone. So really special piece of comedy there from woke leftist liberal Jimmy Kimmel. Two quick things that you'll notice there. One, the homophobia, and I'll just let you decide on what you think about that. And two, well, the obsession with the black face. I mean, it's not just black face you'll see Jimmy Kimmel wearing there. It's black body. His entire arms, fingers, legs, and toes are all painted black. Who knows what else Jimmy Kimmel tried to paint black? And, well, we know that Jimmy Kimmel is obsessed himself with being a black hole. A black hole of narcissism, a black hole of wokeism, a black hole where jokes go to die. And so it, again, brings us great sadness to some degree to say that Jimmy Kimmel is hanging it up. Jimmy Kimmel is ending his show. Jimmy Kimmel, who has had the longest running late night talk show and sort of like beat the drum of the late night death of comedy is saying, this is my final contract. He says his show expires in 2025 and he says, I'm done. I hate to even say it because everyone's laughing at me now each time I say that, but it turns out to not be the case. I still have a little more than two years left on my contract. Seems pretty good, but that seems like enough, says Jimmy Kimmel in to the Los, Los Angeles Times. Jimmy Kimmel, who's hosted the ABC program since 2003, explains that uh, he's too old for this stuff now. It's hard to yearn for it when you're doing it, Jimmy Kimmel Live host told the outlet. Wednesday night, I was very tired and I had to read some scripts and I fell over, falling asleep into my computer. Oh, okay. Well, hmm. Could be some other things, Jimmy, but well, we'll... Uh, Assume the best. Jimmy Kimmel went on to say in the interview, in those moments, I think, I cannot wait until my contract is over. So he's like pining, begging the Los Angeles Times, of course, which is all the paper record for the entertainment industry, about how much he hates his job. And well, you know what? The feeling's mutual. We hate you, Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel saying effectively that he is intent on retiring now. And boys, well, I got to tell you, um, our work here is done. <laughs> we are driving Jimmy Kimmel out of comedy. Of course, Jimmy Kimmel has not been funny in a very, very long time. We could prove that on so many different levels. Here we go. Here are the headlines. Jimmy Kimmel hints that he's exiting late night. This is my final contract. Good, ladies and gentlemen. Late night has lost its, um, well, only black late night host. And that's a little too bad because it sure has been entertaining, just not in the ways that Jimmy Kimmel thought it would be. This was one of our favorite little fights that Jimmy Kimmel had with Tucker Carlson when Tucker Carlson delivered a flamethrower about Jimmy Kimmel being a mouthpiece for the super state, the regime, and the government powers, and how degrading that is. Even the, the quote, comedians, they were on propaganda duty too. Watch this. 
He's also pushing U.S. intelligence to find evidence for this theory that the virus was accidentally released from a lab in Wuhan. That's his new angle to feed the wingnuts, uh, to treat this virus like it was a conspiracy of some kind. It should have never happened. This plague should never have happened. It could have been stopped. But people chose not to stop it. <laughs> what people? Tomorrow he'll blame the Spanish flu on Antonio Banderas. Yeah. Imagine if you're a comedian and all of a sudden your cue card has all kinds of talking points from politicians and foreign governments on it. Don't read it. You degrade yourself and you become complicit in the greatest crime in history. Tucker Carlson, uh, absolutely correct in that and also skewering Jimmy Kimmel in a way that he couldn't ignore what was the rock on tour to that commentary? Oh, here's funny man comedian Jimmy Kimmel. You're going to be rolling on this. Speaking of diarrhea. Tucker Carlson of Fox News, <laughs> yesterday we learned that the, um, the Department of Energy, you probably know about this, believes with what they described as low confidence that COVID may have leaked from a lab in China. Eight federal agencies now have weighed in with their assessments. Four believe COVID came from natural transmission. Two say it was a lab leak and two are still undecided. In other words, we don't know. But the dingbats now see this as some kind of proof that they were right, that the virus came from a Chinese leak at a laboratory, which, by the way, it might have. The point is, we didn't know then. We still don't know now. But what we did know is that Trump and his buddies blaming the Chinese resulted in a great deal of anti-Asian American sentiment and even violence in this country. And that's why it was irresponsible for the president to call it the China virus. But Tucker Carlson apparently disagrees. This plague should never have happened. It could have been stopped, but people chose not to stop it. <laughs> what people? Tomorrow he'll blame the Spanish flu on Antonio Banderas. Yeah. Imagine if you're a comedian and all of a sudden your cue card has all kinds of talking points from politicians and foreign governments on it. Don't read it. You degrade yourself and you become complicit in the greatest crime in history. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, the idea... <laughs> that this man would accuse, that I would be accused of reading talking points from foreign governments. If it weren't so brazen, it would almost be funny coming from this loathsome, un-American Moscow mule. <laughs> he called him a Moscow mule. That's funny because it's a drink at, available at every American bar. Got it? <laughs> he made a poop joke. Yeah. So here's the Jimmy Kimmel uh, original reporting here from the Los Angeles Times. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel, in his own words, saying he cannot wait to retire. He cannot wait to go away forever. He is done with his contract. He's finished. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a man who is walking offset, and it's probably because of you and me and Tucker Carlson, and it makes me very, very happy to say that. The end is near, says the New York Times in their headline, as they go and talk through the rather embarrassing life and times of Jimmy Kimmel. Somebody who had one of the most offensive shows in all of America, somebody who was the host of The Man Show, which was total degeneracy. It wasn't that, it wasn't good, but it certainly wasn't woke or leftist, but it did, it was complicit, obviously, in creating a world where men were slobs and shouldn't ever wish to amount for anything or to anything. It had bad messaging, obviously, for men. And Jimmy Kimmel has, of course, continued that, the pervasive and perverse messaging to our society and our culture. And so good riddance, we say. A lot of other people are saying good riddance to Jimmy Kimmel. Like, for instance, that time when Bill Burr literally called him out to his face for being a leftist, unfunny lunatic. Man. Consider the criticism and the source. This stings. Watch. Like, I know what I'm going to tell my kids when they get to a certain age. I, I really am. Like, I have it down have about religion and, and people. Really? Narcissists, sociopaths, all of this type of stuff. Like, you want to see a great case thing on, like, narcissism. Liberals are so <laughs> stupid the way that they handle Trump. What you do know? you mean? You should shut up. He's a narcissist. Neutral energy. Yeah. You Neutral. Think he, you think he'd go away? If you know what I stopped? think he was? I think he was a one-hit wonder. Uh-huh. Right? He wrote the twist. 
Uh -huh. And then that was it. He was on the casino circuit, and then you yeah. idiot liberals wrote him twist again yeah. when you indicted him. And yeah. now he's a martyr. And now he's, he's coming back, Jimmy. The peppermint twist he's is back. He's coming yeah. back. <laughs> it's going to be great for comedy. He's coming back. <laughs> I can't believe, like, these are honestly going to be our two choices because I, I really try to, with each thing, to try to be, like, figure out who I'm going to put. I mean, it's got to be... I want somebody in their 40s, somebody that's going to have to live with their decisions. I don't want, like, you know... You with want... any luck... With any luck, they'll both die of natural causes <laughs> before the election. And maybe you could get somebody that still has something to live for. Wow. You know? You, this year, you're not going to get a visit from Santa, but you are going to get a visit from the Secret Service. Why? I said die peacefully. <laughs> oh, you did. I, I did. didn't hear peacefully. I did. Oh, no, you and did. then you threw that in. I must have thrown that in. Yeah. Bill Burr is Wait here. He means no harm. Bill Burr has, of course, his, <laughs> his own problems, but we'll get to that later. John Lovitz is one of those guys who's like an old school comedian who just remembers the point of entertainment is making people laugh. That's what John Lovitz did for his entire career. And John Lovitz sort of sang the swan song for the unfunny, woke, late-night comedian, talking about how degrading it is, actually, to the people who founded these shows, like the great Johnny Carson, uh, to turn them into political mental breakdown therapy sessions for leftists. Check it out. I don't like it. I don't like it. They were comedy shows. And now, except for Jimmy Fallon, they've all become very political. And... And... Um, it's for me, it's just, it's too much. I mean, Johnny Carson would, you know, he would do, I go, you know, he would do two or three jokes about whoever was president then or what was going on then. And that was it, you know, but they were entertainment shows. And um, so I don't, you know, I know, I know all those guys, and they're very nice guys. They're very talented. I know Seth. I know Stephen Colbert. I, I know Jimmy Kimmel. I think they're funny, you know. But when they start doing the political stuff, like so one sided, it, it it's like it's and that's all it is. The whole thing. It's just like that. That's not the, that's not the shows that I used to go on. You know, if I want the new news, I'll watch the news. I, I'm not watching those shows. They're late night entertainment, but it's not, it's all political, except for uh, Jimmy Fallon. And they keep getting mad at Jimmy. Why don't you go into politics? Because what he's doing it, it's a silly, like, escapism entertainment show. And they just hammer it to death, you know, it's for me. And they've become, here's my political agenda. They're very open about it. And I'm like, well, all right, I, I have no say in that. It's their show, you know, but I don't particularly. I, I I don't like that they've become that because I go, where's the comedians and the stand-up and the bits and the, the you know, and like Letterman, you know, it was, it was comedy.